Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about a localized and delocalized loan pairs and how to determine the hybridization on those particular elements that's got uh, localized and delocalized loan pairs. So to begin with, localized loan pairs are going to be the one that stays only on a one atom as the name specified. They are going to be localized, so they're going to be only on one atom. They're not really going to be conjugated with the pi bonds and they are not going to be taking part in any of the resonances structures. For example, this particular one I have this alcohol function group and I know on the oxygen we're going to have let me change the color there. I know on the oxygen we're going to have two lone pairs there. And uh, those two lone pairs really can't go anywhere. Another way of saying there's no pi bond close by or they're not allylic lone pairs to uh, for those to be conjugated as a result they stay onto that particular oxygen and both of those are going to be localized and as a result count in the hybridization now in this particular case since oxygen is going to have four electron domains around including those two lone pairs it's still going to be an sp3 and at the end of the day since you have two lone pairs there it's going to be a bent in structure what about this uh, next one here? I got a nitrogen there uh, or an amine functional group. You got, uh, there is going to be a lone pair on the nitrogen. You have two hydrogens attached to it. So if I want to go ahead and draw those out, so there's going to be one hydrogen here and another one right there. So there's a lone pair there. Now this particular lone pair is really not conjugated with any thing as a result it's localized or it stays only on the nitrogen atom now again this nitrogen atom is going to have three bonding domains one lone pair everything counts toward the hybridization so that's going to be an sp3 since there is one lone pair the structure around this nitrogen or the geometry around this nitrogen is going to be a trigonal pyramid Okay, now let's talk about uh, delocalized lone pairs. And as the name specified, they're not going to be staying on one element or one atom in the structure, uh, but rather they're going to be moving through resonance. And uh, one of the ways you can figure out the delocalized lone pairs is going to be your allylic lone pair. Now, as shown in this first example, we got uh, three lone pairs on the oxygen. So let me get that here. We got three lone pairs on this oxygen right there. We have three lone pair on this oxygen, but uh, one of those lone pairs can be conjugated or can make a resonance structure because it's allylic with respect to the pi bond that's right next to uh, that's between the carbon and oxygen. Now you're not going to be using all three of those, you're just going to be using one of those because the other two are not going to be taking part in the resonance. So this comes out and as a result you get in a resonance structure where you get a dull bond here, still got two lone pairs there now, and then this oxygen now will have a single bond, but now all of a sudden you got that lone pair on, on to that oxygen now. So that one lone pair on that oxygen is still going to be delocalized. Whenever you have a delocalized lone pair that stays in the p orbital. So when it stays in the p orbital, it doesn't really count in the hybridization. As a result, both of those oxygens, like for example, at this particular time, this oxygen is going to be an sp2. And this oxygen right there is also going to be an sp2. That's because one of the lone pairs is not counted in the hybridization, and that's because it's delocalized. So anytime you have a delocalized lone pair, it stays in the p orbital, and you don't really count that in the hybridization. Okay, so that obviously there's going to be a negative there. So what about these next sets here? We'll see on the right side, we got an amide functional group. And remember, there is going to be a lone pair on that nitrogen. And that lone pair, again, is going to be conjugated with this pi bond here. Or another way of saying that's an allylic lone pair. So you can have the conjugation there and the resonance being made. In this particular case, you get a positive charge on that nitrogen. And then you get a 
a negative charge on that oxygen. Since that particular lone pair that's on the nitrogen is delocalized, this particular nitrogen is going to be an sp2 hybrid. It's not going to be an sp3 hybrid like you would see in case of a localized lone pair, like you have seen in case of an amine on the top there that was in a localized lone pair. Uh, so that would count in the hybridization, but not in a delocalized one. Uh, what about something like this next example here? We got this five-membered ring, we got two double bonds in the ring, and then obviously we know there is a lone pair on that nitrogen. Now this nitrogen lone pair is going to be allylic with respect to both of those double bonds. As a result, it can resonate or it can conjugate with those pi bonds in there. And uh, when you make this next structure, there's going to be a double bond right there. Nitrogen gets a positive charge and you get a negative charge right there. And obviously you can resonate that further. I'm not going to draw that, but if you go ahead and resonate further, this comes out here. Uh, since this particular lone pair is an allylic and it's going to be in conjugation making it a resonance structure with that uh, pi bond there it's going to be delocalized and as a result this particular uh, nitrogen here is going to be an sp2 and uh, sp2 is going to be trignal planar okay we can talk about this next example here so instead of the nitrogen we have an oxygen now now the difference between the nitrogen and oxygen the nitrogen oxygen is going to have two lone pairs now you may wonder are we going to use both of those lone pairs in the conjugation or when you're drawing the resonance structure or only one well it turns out it's only one lone pair that's going to be conjugated with those uh, pi bonds uh, only one of them counts as an allylic lone pair it's like an uh, as needed thing. You don't really need both of those to make this ring fully conjugated. You need only one of them. As a result, you use only one of those. So this one of those can go in there and resonate in the ring. All right, so we're gonna have an oxygen there. We've got a double bond right there. It's oxygen gets gonna positive charge and there's still a lone pair on that nitrogen on that oxygen and that stays there and that particular lone pair is going to be in a localized lone pair as a result only one lone pair on the on this oxygen is delocalized and uh, when I look at this uh, hybridization on this particular oxygen it's going to be an sp2 and since it's an sp2 and out of those three hybrid orbitals one of them containing the lone pair and the other two are containing the bonding domains so the shape on that is still going to be a bent. What about uh, something like this we have on the right side there? Again, we got a oxygen uh, having two lone pairs, and one of those lone pairs is going to be considered allylic, so it can resonate like this. And uh, as a result, this oxygen will be an sp2, and that's going to give you a bent structure as well, because one lone pair still going to be the part of hybridization. Only one of them is delocalized. Let's try to do some practice here. We got uh, some molecules here and you got to figure out which particular uh, lone pairs are going to be localized and delocalized. On this first one I got this in a hetero six-membered ring uh, containing a nitrogen and there is obviously a lone pair on that nitrogen and now the question is is that lone pair that lone pair on the nitrogen is that going to be conjugated or is that going to be delocalized or localized but turns out this nitrogen already has a p orbital that's unhybridized because you got a pi bond right there so since there is a pi bond made between the nitrogen and oxygen uh, carbon there that pi bond can resonate so this pi bond can go in there and then as a result, this pi bond comes out to uh, relocate itself and that last pi bond also relocate itself to make this full conjugation. And when you do that, you don't really need the lone pair that's on that particular nitrogen. So like I said, it's based on the need. Do you need a lone pair to make something conjugated? And if the system is already conjugated and even if you have the lone pair, then you don't really need that lone pair to be delocalized. As a result, this particular one is going to be localized. 
and the hybridization is going to be an sp2 the structure you got only two bonding domains one lone pair it's still going to be a bent in around that uh, nitrogen the next uh, structure here the second one in the middle make sure you pause the session here and figure out which nitrogens or which lone pairs are localized and which ones are delocalized we have a lone pair on the nitrogen there we got a lone pair on the second nitrogen and obviously we do have lone, two lone pairs on that oxygen i didn't really talk about uh, that particular oxygen in the previous examples that's because those two lone pairs are localized they really can't go anywhere i can't really do anything like this if i do something like that that carbon is going to have five bonds otherwise you know that's going to be the violation there so that one is localized so that's why we didn't really focus on those and they're not allylic either uh, the, the most important ones are going to be the allylic lone pairs if I focus on this nitrogen let's call that nitrogen A and call this nitrogen B out of those two nitrogens which nitrogen has a localized and which nitrogen has a delocalized lone pair it turns out the the lone pair or the nitrogen A is actually two bonds away from that carbon. So there is a, a two bond separation before you get that pi bond there. So since there is a two bond separation, this particular lone pair is going to be localized. You can't really have that conjugated with the pi bond. And since it's localized, it's going to have an sp3 hybridization on that nitrogen. However, when you look at the lone pair on nitrogen B, the lone pair on nitrogen B it can resonate because it's an, it's an allylic lone pair with respect to that pi bond that we've got right next to it. And that makes this particular lone pair to be delocalized lone pair. This delocalized lone pair is going to have an sp2 hybridization uh, with a trigonal planar structure or geometry. In the next set, I got a bunch of nitrogens there. And if I call those, let's call this A, call this B, and call that nitrogen to be C, uh, this C very likely it's kind of too far away from any double bonds around it so that one is not going to be conjugated i don't really see anything any allylic positions on that nitrogen so as a result that's going to be localized and then when i look at uh, the other two nitrogens the nitrogen a is kind of similar to what we have seen in this previous example right there and uh, as a result, this nitrogen A is going to be delocalized because I can have this going in there and it can resonate uh, with the pi bond of the ring because it's allylic with respect to that. And that makes this a delocalized lone pair. And when you look at your other nitrogen, nitrogen B there, now nitrogen B already have a pi bond in there. So since it already has a pi bond in there, you don't need that lone pair to be delocalized because the pi bond that's on the nitrogen can be used to make the resonance structures. As a result, that lone pair stays localized. It's kind of similar to what we've seen in example one here where you got this lone pair to be localized on the nitrogen. Let's look at this last one here. We have two nitrogens, so we'll call these nitrogen A and nitrogen B. And clearly this nitrogen B is kind of in a similar scenario what we have talked about on, on the first example here. So this nitrogen B since it carries an unhybridized p orbital already that's containing the pi bond this does not this lone pair does not needs to be delocalized so as a result this is going to be localized and when i look at uh, the top nitrogen well the top nitrogen lone pair is actually going to be allylic with respect to the pi bond so i can have this 
I can have this lone pair going in there and as a result this pi bond coming out and now you are about to make a bunch of resonance structures there. So when you make this uh, resonance structure there you would have a double bond with that top nitrogen and that nitrogen will be having a positive charge and there's going to be a negative charge on that carbon and then the bottom part stays the same and then I can resonate this stuff all around the ring because now this lone pair is going to be in conjugation with that particular um, pi bond there and then this can come out okay so that's how it's going to look like and then you can just uh, keep going on and uh, make a couple of other uh, maybe another one and then after that it's going to fall back to the first one got a nitrogen there that's going to have a double bond on the other side so that lone pair still stays there and then this can go back and it will go fall back to the structure of one there so you can clearly see how that particular lone pair on nitrogen A is delocalized but the lone pair on nitrogen B was localized because it already had a pi bond in there that was used to make the resonance structures so this one is going to be delocalized all right, so this is how you're going to be determining what's localized and what's delocalized. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave any comments in the section below.